Chesney Hawks is a pop singer-songwriter whose career started at the age of 19 when he appeared in the film Buddy's Song, which featured his best-known single, The One and Only, which topped the UK singles chart for five weeks and reached the top ten in the US. And he's on the line here just now. How are you today? I'm very well, Toby. How are you doing? Yep, I'm doing great. So, of course, the song The One and Only was featured in the film Buddy's Song, how did you actually get the role in that film? Oh, I literally auditioned. It mm. was, uh, it's funny, it's kind of a slightly convoluted story. I was having my wisdom teeth out uh, <laughs> and I woke up with gauze in my in my uh, mouth and uh, and everything. And uh, all I could see was a little TV in the corner of the room and uh, Roger Daltrey was, was on the TV mm. appealing for a young boy that could possibly play his son. <laughs> And uh, I couldn't talk, and I was—I remember my parents were there. And I was like, oh, "I want to do that." I want to do that. <laughs> and uh, literally, uh, you know, a week later, I was—I uh, was in the line of of young boys that uh, it was like a you know X Factor style audition, and uh, you know, loads and loads of young boys. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get the part. I mean, you know, it took a while. I, I went to about four or five different um, auditions that kept getting steadily and steadily more, uh, you know, uh, serious. Yeah. <laughs> And and more people uh, watching until it um, uh, it ended up at a at, at Bray Studios between me and another guy and the the Who were rehearsing at Bray Studios mm. uh, where where they were rehearsing for their uh, you know comeback <laughs> tour <laughs> back then they're yeah. still doing it now um, and uh, yeah finale comeback tour like. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and that was that was interesting because I had to play guitar in front of uh, Pete Townsend, so that w- that was a very interesting one, yeah. uh, very nerve wracking. But uh, yeah, so I, I was obviously lucky enough uh, to be right for the role, and you know, mm. I got the part. That yeah. was it. Did you have any acting experience before taking on that role? No, mm. none at all. I was always just a musician, and uh, I, <laughs> the reason that I was interested in it was because the, the part was uh, was very much geared towards music. Um, yeah. You know, the, the story was a young boy uh, that was a songwriter and played guitar and uh, it just kind of it just kind of uh, you know said something to me um and i thought oh this is a chance for me to get into the music industry and maybe there's a record deal at the end of it which there was yeah (laughs) did it ever cross your mind that maybe it would be a way to get into the acting industry uh yes yes it did it did but uh I honestly didn't know how I was going to do with the acting. I didn't because mm. I'd never acted before in my life. I was God. I was only seventeen when yeah. I got the part. So for me, it was uh, it was an unknown quantity, you know. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, it was it was a real challenge, and I got kind of thrown in the into the lion's den, as it were. And there were some amazing actors involved. Um, you know, Michael Elphick, um, yeah. who was he played Boone, <laughs> and everyone knows Michael. Um, and then Sharon Juice, who played my mum. You know, they 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 would had been acting since they were kids, and they you know they took me under their wings. But I also had, had like a, a lot of younger people um, that were kind of had gone on to do great things, like Nick Moran, Lee Ross, um, Julia Sawala, uh, yeah. Paul McKenzie, all these amazing uh, young actors that at the time had done like Press Gang and Grange Hill, and uh, you know yeah. all these uh, the Bill. Everyone had played. Everyone had been in the Bill at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you must have felt lucky to be in with the actors yeah very much so uh and also a little bit um nervous because mm. they'd all been to you know uh, drama school and all that kind of stuff and, and that's something that i hadn't done um so i you know i, I was a little bit kind of i didn't it wasn't that i felt like a fraud yeah. i just felt I, that I felt a little bit from from those guys like who is this young whippersnapper who's come out of nowhere and got the lead part (laughs) you know what I mean so there was a little bit of pressure from that yeah so in terms of the one and only when you first heard it did you think oh that's going to be a hit or was it maybe just one of the songs out of many in the soundtrack and wasn't special at the time well it was it was actually the very last song uh, that we uh, recorded the very last song that came along because all the other songs pretty much most of the other songs um, were written specifically for the film so The guy that wrote the book and the screenplay, he wrote all the lyrics to songs like I'm a Man, Not a Boy and Secrets of the Heart and yeah. all the songs that were actually included in the film because they were very much, you know, a part of the the script. Um, you know, the, the character wrote them about the story that was happening in the film, if you see what yeah. I mean. So, <laughs> so they were all very much kind of like inner circle songs. I wrote a few of the songs with Nigel, the, the writer. Um, 
And uh, so the one and only was like a, almost like an afterthought. Uh, the record label were like, we love the album. You know, it's we've got some singles here and we, we are very pleased and very happy with it. Uh, but maybe there's maybe there's another couple of songs, perhaps, or maybe one song, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so the because it was with a major record label uh, at the time, um, you know, there were loads of songs thrown at us. Yeah. Um, and I tried to write some songs, everything. But but then my dad um, knew um, Nick Kerr. Shaw's um, publisher oh. and uh, and he played him a couple of songs and he's like oh my god these are great is this a new Nick album and uh, <laughs> you know because he knew dad knew I was a massive Nick Kershaw fan <laughs> and uh, he said no it is Nick but he doesn't want to to record these songs he's kind of taken a sabbatical from pop stardom and wants to kind of write for other people so when we brought the song, a dad brought the cassette back to me. And I remember I still got that cassette somewhere. I've got a little asterisk. There was about 15 songs. I got a little asterisk by the one and only and a couple of other ones. And we brought it to the team and we rehearsed. We were recording at Abbey Road at the time. And it didn't go down very well. <laughs> you know, like the whole team were like, oh, you know, it's an outside song. And, you know, I'm sure we can find something internal, you know. And so uh, that that day I went away a little dejected because I thought there goes my chance of meeting Nick Kershaw, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But then the record label kind of got in touch and said, oh, let, let's put the boys' vocal on it. And, well, the rest is history. So yeah. yeah. And that's the song, of course, that you're mainly known for. Does that annoy you that it kind of follows you around a bit? Uh, I've had my ups and downs with the song. I cannot tell a lie. Um, <laughs> not that I've ever disliked the song at all. Um, it, but, yeah, the, the, the thing, it's not the song itself that that, that um, gets on my nerves sometimes. It's the, it's the inability for people to think that there's more to me than, yeah. than the one song. If you see what I mean, yeah. so and that's fair enough. I, I'm I'm so used to it now, Toby, and I I understand it. I really do. Um, but it can be a little bit disheartening sometimes, you know, as as a, a singer songwriter, an artist, um, to be kind of labelled with that uh, mm. that kind of um, you know one hit wonder thing, and yeah. uh, and people know is my name is synonymous with the with the phrase the one and only. You know, yeah. it does get a little bit um, old sometimes, but. Uh, you know, I'm. I love the song. Uh, I still have a lot of love for it, and you know, I've kind of given up ownership of it because mm. now when I play it, I, mean, I didn't play it for years after that time. I really didn't. Mm. Um, I was kind of anti it. <laughs> yeah. But then, but these days, you know, we're really we're good friends. I, I love playing it, and I understand that people uh, have their own connections to it and their own love for it. So uh, yeah, it, it's a, it's a bit of, bit of both, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and when you perform that song now, is there a different connection? To to it than you maybe used to when you used to perform it back in the day yeah of course i mean back in the day it was like my first single i was very energetic you know i was all taking my top off and stuff like <laughs> that and, um it was always kind of i always felt the lyric um as kind of a self-empowerment lyric so i think i always had that in my heart when i was singing it but um these days, as I said before, I've kind of given up ownership to it. So yeah. when when I when I sing it, it's almost in a different way. I sing it for for the people that kind of have that connection to it and love it, yeah. you know. And I, you can't help but feel the energy when I when I you know when you start up that uh, that kind of iconic intro, that you know, then you yeah. see people, oh, it's the one I'm only, and they kind of come to the front and you know get all excited about it. So yeah, it is different these days. Um, but as I said, I, I still I still really enjoy playing it yeah and in a weird kind of way you became famous in 1991 that was when the one and only was a hit but you're still as relevant today really it doesn't seem like your fame has gone away well i mean that that side of things is uh is a mystery to me um <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, I often sometimes attribute it to my name because it's quite a memorable name, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I I never stopped recording and, and making music and touring. I was one of the things that I had so many, so many great advices uh, back then. Roger Daltrey, I, I toured with Brian Adams, I toured with uh, Huey Lewis. I've got my dad who was in the tremolos. And all of those kind of great musicians um, all told me to stay on the road, you know, never stop touring. So I've played in every single venue up and down the country in Europe. And, you know, I, I never stopped touring. And I, I think that probably has a lot to do with it. Because so many people have seen me live over the years as well, you know, so maybe that's it. I don't know, Toby. It's, uh, it's, it's an interesting mystery. <laughs> yeah. Now, because you became famous so young at the age of 19, did you ever feel like you missed part of your your youth and had to give up a lot for fame yeah I was very young uh, at that time all of my friends were going to uni and doing 
all that side of life. Um, I kind of did the uni uh, 10 years after that when I was playing all the universities, you know, yeah. and, and I would turn up at all and do all the kind of uh, survivor balls and things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, so I did get to experience that side of life, but a little bit later on. Uh, yeah, it, it is true. Um, my life was not my own for those kind of, well, four years, I guess, from kind of 19 to 23, something like that. Um, there were times when, you know, I was touring so much that I, I wasn't home for, you know, months and months on end. And, mm. you know, I, I didn't really get to see my actual friends uh, for a very long time. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely missed out on some some of the kind of, uh, I don't know, rites of passage of a of a young, you know, teenage, early twenties. Um, but but then I experienced some incredible other things, you know. Which so yeah. I, I certainly wouldn't change it for 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 anything. Yeah, I would guess your friends would be more jealous of you than the other way yeah. around. I think you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of them, you know, I did get to see some of them along the way. You know, like they would turn up at Wembley Arena or something like that, or yeah. you know, some. I remember was one friend who happened to to be in New York while I was there promoting a record, and I was like, oh my god you're actually here you know it was like one of those moments it was like you know a, a little drip feed of home came came to me you know yeah. so that they, they did get to see some of that madness yeah so let's talk about some of the songs that you have written where do you get your inspiration from generally uh i mean gosh it depends everywhere mm. really you know uh, everything from obviously from from my friends and, f and family and loved ones and relationships uh obviously that's probably the main uh, influence on my songwriting i think i like i love emotional connection lyrics uh, but everything from kind of you know travel like i wrote a song about john lennon when for about the first time i ever went to new york talking about new york um and you know i as a as a young singer songwriter i i had to go and visit all the places that john lennon was famous for for being photographed at and of course yeah. you know the dakota buildings where he eventually died and the imagine circle and all that and that lyric came out of that uh that trip um it's called john lennon lived here which is on my real life love album yeah. uh, but you know kids nowadays i write about my kids uh i, I was a song there's a song on that same album called airplane which is about you know paper airplanes and my kids used to yeah, um, love playing. Uh, any uh, parents would uh, would relate to that song. Um, but you know, anything like even just write, write reading a book. You know, I remember writing a song about um, far from the mad madding crowd once called Miss Everdeen. You know, it's mm -hmm. which is one of the characters in the book. So it can ly lyrically can come from anywhere, really. Yeah, definitely. So as well as performing live songs in a musical kind of way, you're also performing in musicals. So how did that actually come about? Uh, the first musical I ever did was. Was, was called uh, McGregor's Trap and it was based mm -hmm. on Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped um, and it was at the Edinburgh Fringe and I couldn't have been more than 22 something like that wow. 22, 23 uh, and it was a it was great it was a brand new musical written by uh, a guy called Brian Spence um, it never went anywhere unfortunately <laughs> but uh, a really good, great musical and a great experience and a great kind of foray into musical theatre for me because it wasn't like you know going straight into the West End it was a I did get offered Joseph back then, early, early, early days, just after um, Jason. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I didn't take it at the time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, since then, I have done Joseph a couple of times. I, I play, I've done um, Godspell. I did a musical uh, about the the songs of, based on the songs of Barry Manilow, which was an interesting, mm. uh, interesting journey for me. Um, and now I've actually written a musical. Yeah, The <laughs> so, One, isn't it? The One, yeah. exactly. We loosely started it off loosely based on on kind of my my early life but then as these things go these kind of big projects that it kind of transformed into um into a much bigger thing and and now it's a, it's about two brothers uh, uh, in in Leicester, in a yeah. set in a pub in Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> and when are we expecting that to be starting shows? Well, uh, funnily enough, we were just getting into that as the pandemic hit, so mm -hmm. obviously that kind of put um, put the brakes on the whole project. Um, so so nowadays it's kind of hard to get a new musical into into theatres mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. Yeah. You know, there's been a big two year sabbatical, and everything that was going into the theatres in 2020. Is now finding a home again, yeah. and so so we're years off of putting new musicals in. Producers are very scared to put money into into uh, new musicals. They're looking for surefire bets, you know, mm. your lay misses, and uh, yeah. uh, you know, let's rock you. We will rock 
Matthews of the world are the ones that are actually going out there, you know. Um, so what we decided to do, uh, me and, and the, the team that I work with, is is record the uh, the album or record an album uh, mm. of the songs. So that's what we did. And and so far, we've only put it out on YouTube. So if anyone's interested, go to chesneyhawks.com. It's all, it's all on there. Look for the one, the musical. And uh, we have, we made little videos. Uh, we got uh, an amazing cast that we assembled um, for, uh, around the world actually uh, wow. and they all recorded it in their cupboards and bedrooms <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we did it all locally and I've got some fabulous singers you know Kevin Sim from Liberty X did uh, he oh, wow. played he played young Duncan whilst I am old Duncan <laughs> <laughs> are we looking at this to be in the West End ideally or Broadway or where I think uh, I'd like to put it on tour to start mm. with to be honest it feels like a real touring thing but um, yeah obviously the the goal uh, the holy grail for a musical is to be in the West End or Broadway so of yeah. course I have I have dreams of that um, so we'll see how the project goes we shall see watch this space Toby yeah now you've got a big compilation album coming out later this month on the 25th Indeed. of March what can you tell us about the album um, that was another a lockdown project uh, where yeah. I delved into um, you know the my back catalogue um, mm. since since the Buddy Song era right through to to my last album which was uh, Real Life Love in 2012 and uh, I you know it was really fun and quite cathartic to go back across uh, all the old demos and come into like you know the, the outtakes and things like that um, yeah. So we found like demos of the one and only, and uh, wow. you know we also got um, Nick, who's a very good friend of mine now, Kershaw, uh, you know, to to do um, a 2022 remix of the of the song because he wow. produced it the original. <laughs> so that was pretty cool actually, and he did a fantastic job. I mean, he didn't just remix it; he 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 re-recorded the the he did a new guitar solo and like recorded all the guitars again, and like wow. I, it, he went way way <laughs> more than I thought he was going to do, and. Uh, and it's it's really interesting mm -hmm. to kind of hear the take i don't know why he redid it because i guess the the solo was quite an iconic solo now oh, and yeah. so when when the mix came i was like oh wow he's redone the solo interesting <laughs> you know <laughs> do you prefer yeah. the new version i mean i actually really like the new version but mm -hmm. maybe it's because i've oh god i've had 30 years to to listen to the <laughs> old version and uh, yeah. this is this feels spangly you know mm. it's like getting into a brand new rolls royce or something <laughs> yeah. and also you're going to be playing rewind festival this year north and south yes yes i mean I, i've i've played rewind over the years many many times um and yeah i'm doing it again this year i've got all sorts of gigs this year i've got mm. uh, rewind i've got the let's rock shows um uh, anyone interested in coming to see me live chesneyhawks.com it's all on there yeah. Um, I seem to have tons and tons of uh, gigs coming in, which is great. Yeah. More so than uh, the last couple of years, Toby. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's for sure. And how have you been coping during these last couple of years? Have you been doing online shows and things like that? Yeah, I did do quite a few like uh, online shows. I actually created my own uh, TV studio from my oh. from my studio in LA. In the oh. end, I, I went I went all out and and uh, I started this uh, this show called Live and Unfiltered, where uh, you know I would play live music and chat. And I brought in uh, guests to talk to, including um, uh, a lot of uh, health workers, um, yeah. you know, through the pandemic who come and tell their story. And I mean, we had tears and laughter and also it was great fun. Yeah. That's all on my YouTube channel now. Um, I think we did we did a whole series. Of, uh, I think we did 10 shows wow. and uh, it was it was hard work and, and fun. And uh, the learning curve was quite steep, mm. <laughs> you know, but that was kind of my main thing through through lockdown, uh, yeah. you know, and it was it was really fun. I also started a podcast uh, through log lockdown, um, which is uh, which was another interesting talking about mental health was our uh, our main kind of drive. So if anyone's interested in that, we are all a bit mental dot com. Yeah, well, that's one of the few benefits of the pandemic, isn't it? Really, people that yeah. had never even thought about doing a TV show or a podcast have just made one. It's that yeah. saying, isn't it? Necessity is the whatever of invention. Wisdom of event or the mother of invention. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, no, it's true. I, I think what happened was my wife and I were sitting down thinking, 
Okay. So my main income, our main income is, is my gigs and it looks like we're not going to have any gigs this yeah. year. So <laughs> how are we going to do this? You know, and I think there were so many people uh, up and down well, all over the world, to be honest with you, doing the same thing, you know, where some people could work through the pandemic and work from home. And, and that was great. And I was always so happy to hear my friends were doing well through the pandemic. Um, you know, but there's people, you know, such as myself that couldn't work couldn't work at all and so we had to think about diversifying somehow and uh you know i mean i certainly didn't kind of you know it, it was tough financially um yeah. but but creatively it was really great and uh you know i made loads of videos and uh did a lot of live shows and we started the podcast and and all of these things funnily enough um have kind of stayed a part of my life, if you know what I mean. I got the the musical uh, recorded. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the pandemic, I have a lot to thank for because I think, you know, maybe a, a lot of those things probably wouldn't have been, uh, you know, even created. Yeah. I also finished an album. I've got a, wow. I've got a new album that's coming out in the summer. Um, so, th you know, without the pandemic, I, I'm not sure that would have been finished either. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So is there anything else coming up for you? Because it sounds like it's going to be quite a busy, year is there stuff on top yeah. of that uh yeah there is <laughs> I'm, my my father um is in a, was in a band called the tremolos a 60s yeah. band um very successful uh band in the 60s and 70s and he had a tour uh late last year where he he was supposed to be doing all all up and down the country um yeah. doing this uh, kind of package tour with the with the marmalade and uh and pj proby and herman's hermits and all these you know mm -hmm. these old guys up and down yeah. the country playing their their wares and so dad got ill and uh, I, I took over the tour mm. and uh that was an amazing experience as well like you know fronting the tremolos so these yeah. these music i grew up with and uh there's another tour this year and i think my dad is probably not going to be able to make it so i'm i'm going to be taking over the the, the reins again for of the tremolos so yeah. <laughs> so i've got so let's see i've got the musical i've got the podcast i've got the box set i've got my gigs i've got tremolos gigs i've got a new album that's enough isn't it <laughs> yeah i think so <laughs> yeah well where are we able to keep up to date with you everywhere well yeah galactic central point for, for me is chesneyhawks.com yeah. I try to keep everything updated there I've got all my gigs um, uh, all my releases and, and uh, you know latest news and and, uh, and there are there are sections in the website um, for uh, the musical for the podcast and everything so if you're, anyone's interested chesneyhawks.com great well many thanks for coming on the show today it's been great to have you on oh thanks for having me and I, I've enjoyed uh, sharing the spotlight with Fozzy Bear <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> for those of you that uh, I don't know what I'm talking about because you're only listening to the audio. Yeah. Uh, Toby is is sitting in front of a fantastic Muppets picture. With, you've got all the greats right behind him. So yes. that kept me going. <laughs> <laughs> Put you in a mood subconsciously, I think. It did, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love Fuzzy Bear? Yeah. <laughs>